Yes, and welcome back to Rondo Real Day Needy. Balala. Balala. <laughs> that is not the movie we watched this week. We are bringing you another Disney Bounding Our Life episode, and we watched Puppet Treasure Island. Oh, hey, matey. <laughs> All right, so to Wikipedia, Muppet Treasure Island is a 1996 American musical action adventure comedy film. <laughs> Sorry, it cracks me up every single time. Obviously, uh, produced by Jim Henson Productions, directed by Brian Henson. Uh, and if you don't know, the Muppet Treasure Island is basically the book Treasure Island in Muppet like form and fashion. There's a lot of singing too. So the idea for Muppet Treasure Island actually came out around the release of the Muppet Christmas Carol. Uh, I guess Muppet Christmas Carol did so well that they decided to adapt another classic literary work. Co-writer Kirk Thatcher stated that there were a whole bunch of ideas out there and I was most keen on Treasure Island and a King Arthur story with medieval dragons and knights. That would have been awesome. I agree. In the end, we all agreed as a group that Treasure Island was a better story for the Muppets to take on. In the first draft, Gonzo and Rizzo were initially written to portray two characters named Jim and Hawkins, but Thatcher explained that the studio was nervous they couldn't hold the emotional heart of the movie, so eventually the human Jim Hawkins was written in, and we cast Gonzo and Rizzo alongside him. So something really interesting. To coincide with the film's theatrical release, a making of documentary featuring the filmmakers and the Muppets aired on the Disney Channel. So Muppet Treasure Island opened on February 16th and earned 7.9 million over the weekend, ranking it third at the North American box office behind the second weekend of Broken Arrow and fellow newcomer Ooh. Happy Gilmore. It oh ultimately gosh. grossed 34 million and change domestically. The review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes has the film at an approval rating of 73% based on 26 reviews with an average rating of 6.2 out of 10. The critical consensus reads, though less Muppet-centric than the original trilogy, Muppet Treasure Island is an energetic, cheerful take on Robert Louis Stevenson's classic adventure with tippedly solid gags. All right, critical reviewer, what did you think of Muppet Treasure Island? It was good. Neither of us had seen it before this. I had seen snippets of it. You'd seen snippets After of it. After we watched it, I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen parts of this, but... You thought it was good? Yeah. Christmas Carol was better. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was okay. Um, I wanted to like it really bad. There were a lot of really great moments in it, um, from the Muppets angles. Uh, but... I just felt like the actual human characters did not have as good of a performance as the human characters in A Christmas Carol. And I think that was really the thing that brought it down a notch for me. Yeah. I also didn't feel like the music was as great. Um, so we had a very interesting thing to do with this movie. <laughs> We almost got murdered on an island ourselves. <laughs> so as most of you know, we go geocaching. And um, our idea for this was going to be to go after one of the geocaches in our area. That literally is the Treasure Island Adventure is the name of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's on an island. Yep. A forested island in the middle of a lake. Yep. Um, and so the first time we went out, we had ourselves and our daughter mm -hmm. and our inflatable raft. Yep. With only two oars. And your fishing gear. And my fishing gear. And we were not prepared exactly for what we were going to be facing. Nope. We tried to land on the wrong side of the island and ended up popping the boat. Yeah. Which then led to furiously paddling back <laughs> to the mainland area where our car was. After having spent 40-ish minutes getting the thing blown up. And getting the And another 20 minutes getting, getting off us yeah. into it and getting our life jackets on. <laughs> two hours later... We were back at the car, wet, and furiously packing the car because we were both upset. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out a way to save our day. <laughs> it uh, ended up not being, like, super terrible, but we... It was a good playground. We, there was a good playground, so I took Reagan over there. But it was just, we didn't realize how, like, dense. forested and dense it was going to be. And there was just no way, A... That we could land the boat the way we thought we would. And B, 
if we would have brought Reagan, it would have been terrible. It would have been a bad idea. She, we didn't have the carrier with us. She would have gotten scraped up. Oh, like, yeah. No way. There was no way we were going to be able to No way. We were having to walk through dense, dense thickets and stuff. Like, where literally you would just duck your head and push through, like, brambles and thorns. Yeah. Next week, <laughs> boat is repaired. Boat is repaired and Daughters kids with grandma. And, grandmas. <laughs> and we set off again with no extra fishing gear or anything, just yep. us and our geocaching gear. And we had to paddle around to the other side of the lake, uh, yep. the lake, the island, which was a much farther row. Uh, but we made that work and then got the boat landed and started our hour and a half adventure. Yeah. Hello folks, we're here at Lake Arlington. We currently have the utility uh, electrical pump in the back of the Jeep plugged in. Jared is working on getting everything blown up. We are currently parked so that we're gonna walk that direction. We're gonna launch from there and we're gonna go around the south side of this island and then back around over here somewhere. That is the hypothetical landing point. Jared uh, flew over it yesterday when he was working and said he thinks he saw a good place to land. So hopefully uh, we'll get there and be able to actually geocache and get back safely. Jared made the find. Literally, not where it was supposed to be. Standing on top of it, it, it was, was not where it was supposed to be. Well, it had fallen off and gotten kind of buried under all the leaves and stuff. And so when we were walking around, we unearthed it by kicking one of these sticks out of the way. Good job. Okay, two stages down. How are you feeling? Do I look like a drowned rat? Not exactly. Okay, and I'm probably doing pretty good. <laughs> I'm feeling very sweaty. And I pulled like five mosquitoes off of me. So we're putting bug spray on right now. But I'm very happy that we were able to find stage two a lot faster than stage one. Don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> Didn't, it's just walked into the air. Okay, so we found four stages. We think there's only five, but it would really suck if there was actually six and we didn't just walk to it instead of boat down. We were thinking about doing that. And now my leg is on fire. I don't know what I brushed up against, but that hurts. I'll be fine. I think. Can I just say how happy I am that we decided for Reagan to have a grandparent day while we did this. Because this would not have been good with an 18 month old. Jared found it. Way back there. Good job, babe. Whew. This geocaching 
My adventure is definitely worth the five star terrain and it is not for the faint of heart. My arms and legs are like all covered in all sorts of foliage debris. But it was fun. Now about stage four out of five is where my phone started blowing up about the weather. Now, let me clarify. We had checked the weather before we left and there was not supposed to be any thunderstorms. It was supposed to be nice and calm. So we were like, great, it's gonna be great boating. We can just paddle out, paddle back. So update, I am now sitting on the shoreline and Jared is going to go get the boat because it's much faster for him to just go than for him to try to wait for me to keep up. And the reason why he's going is because of that lovely storm cloud with all the rain. So he's gonna come pick me up right here and hopefully we'll be back before it starts raining and thunderstorming. For the record, Storms was not on the radar when we made this decision to come out here, but that's Texas weather for you. Also y'all, this is why you should wear pants when going bushwhacking. I was not smart today. At least I wear my hiking boots. That was one smart decision that I made. Well, by the time we get back to the boat, the wind literally picked up like crazy. It's like blowing like 20, 25 miles an hour. And so thankfully at that point, we are going with the wind. Like we're not trying to paddle against it. Or at least we thought, thankfully. Yeah, and we're like, great, if we just make it around the other side of the island, we'll be sheltered. Mm, no. No, the island <laughs> created a... a um... Wind tunnel, basically. Yeah, the wind basically created a venturi effect on the backside and made the wind go faster. Yeah. And while we were going with the wind to get to the end of the island, when we made it around, we had to go against the wind. And we were paddling furiously against like 25 mile an hour winds. And we were trying to make it this way towards land and we got blown that way. And we ended up having to land on a different part of mainland like a yeah. half mile from the car mm -hmm. because we couldn't even get across 50 yards of open water yeah without getting blown all over the place so yeah. then we took the boat picked it up portaged it to another area and then paddled furiously across that area which was open water for about another 100 yards mm -hmm. um and that took like five minutes it was it was a long going time. at like a 45 degree to the wind and we got there and found out we couldn't portage the boat to the other spot so Maddie stayed in the boat I took a rope yeah waded chest deep in the water and pulled her along as she paddled away from the mainland Anything area that, that, could that was top the boat, the boat. <laughs> and so she paddled out around like to try to pull away from me and I pulled her around the uh brambles all the brambles and stuff and walking chest deep in the water until we got to where we yeah. could lay in the boat by the car and to be fair you were already drenched Oh, Before we were <laughs> it you my phone. decided, I had to get a new phone because my phone. Got Which wet. I've been trying to get Jared to upgrade his phone for two years. <laughs> so he texts me and he's like, "I have to get a new phone. I know you're heartbroken." <laughs> Rip iPhone 6s. Needless to say, we don't have any video of us furiously paddling across the lake because, to we be honest, it was it was a lot of effort. Um. But we beat it. I'd say I'm just about ready to go to work, right? <laughs> or church. Okay, and I think we've both agreed. Never, ever, ever again. Inflatable rafts. You know, Good idea. Like an hour ahead. Good idea in theory. Bad idea in practice. Uh, it's, it's good for piddling around. It's not good for a mile long paddle through direct headwinds at 20 knots while it's thunderstorming. Mm -mm. So would you suggest this to other family? <laughs> we had fun. Just don't honestly, go on a day where there's like a freak sh freak storm that pops up out of the middle of nowhere yeah. blowing 30 miles an hour. We honestly got in the car and we were like, hey, we had fun, <laughs> but I don't think I would recommend this for other people. Not while it's storming. Not while it's storming. <laughs> go in the winter when all the everything's dead and 
that's not super thick brush. Yep. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see y'all next week. Bye.